So uh, the, the title of my uh, presentation is uh, a new methanogenic biodegradation method to remove oil from uh, produced water. And uh, so here is a, is a picture of uh, produced water we, we collected from uh, the still water oil field here in Oklahoma. And as, uh, as we all know, uh, produced water has high concentrations of uh, total dissolved solids and high concentrations of dissolved and emulsified oil. And, and total dissolved solids are mostly sodium chloride, uh, alkaline air metals and toxic metals. And dissolved and emulsified oil are mostly alkanes, BTX, BAH, resins and, and asphaltins. Now, uh, our research on produced water includes uh, the development of uh, computational tools and uh, new economic methods to remove uh, toxic metals and uh, um, oil from produced water. This time I want to focus on our research uh, uh, to develop uh, a new economic method to uh, remove oil from produced water. And this method uh, uh, consists uh, of the stimulation of indigenous uh, methanogenic microbial uh, communities that are inherent to, to produce water. So what, what happens with uh, produced water is that high salinity and high concentrations of oil hydrocarbons uh, hinders the utilization of available technologies to treat, uh, to treat produced water. Uh, for example, uh, aerobic biodegradation with activated sludge communities is difficult because uh, the salinity of produced water inhibits the activity of activated sludge uh, uh, microbes and uh, the utilization of, of technologies like membrane filtration is not cheap, it's expensive because uh, at the high concentrations of uh, hydrocarbons, uh, they plaque uh, at the pore space of, uh, of the membrane material, as we can see here in this uh, picture where we filter produced water using a cellulose filter of 0.45 micrometers. So uh, when it comes to produced water, uh, uh, the problem is not the lack of uh, technologies to remove uh, oil or other contaminants from produced water. The problem is uh, the lack of economic technologies to remove, uh, in this case, high concentrations of oil from huge volumes of produced water at an, at an economic cost. So uh, the method, the economic method that we are uh, developing uh, to remove oil from uh, produced water at, a, at an economic cost, uh, um, lies on the fact that uh, uh, produced water contains uh, methanogenic oil degraded microbial communities, including uh, fermentative microbes and methanogenic uh, mi microbes. And uh, what, what happens here is that uh, uh, fermentative microbes, they uh, degrade uh, uh, hydrocarbons like this one, um, produce acetate and hydrogen. And the produced acetate and hydrogen is used by acetoclastic methanogens and hydrogenotrophic methanogens to produce, uh, to produce uh, methane. And uh, sometimes produced water also contains sulfur reducing bacteria, which can out, out outcompete uh, methanogens for hydrogen and acetate if sulfate concentration is relatively, relatively high. But uh, in general, produced water contains uh, these uh, microbes which can degrade oil. And uh, to prove that these microbes are generally present in produced water, we conducted a microbial diversity analysis for the Cushing and still water oil fields in Oklahoma. And these are some results. And uh, um, well, they are there. I mean, they are inherent to produce water. And uh, the, reason, uh, the reason why uh, oil is not completely degraded in oil reservoirs is uh, the lack of uh, nutrients and the accumulation of hydrogen. So uh, what, what happens is that the hydrogen, the accumulation of dissolved hydrogen above, above threshold levels uh, uh, constitutes, or it is a barrier, a thermodynamic barrier that does not allow for the, for the complete degradation of oil. And uh, eventually, I mean, nutrients in oil reservoirs, they get uh, depleted. And uh, based on, on this information, uh, the method that we are proposing to stimulate the degradation of, of oil using uh, indigenous uh, methanogenic microbial communities consists on the combined supply of uh, protein-rich matter, 
and, and carbon dioxide. In this case, uh, uh, carbon dioxide is uh, to remove the accumulated hydrogen into form of methane gas. And protein-rich matter is uh, to supply the required nutrients for the activity of both types of, of microbial communities, fermentative microbes and methanogenic uh, microbes. So uh, to test this uh, possibility, uh, I mean the possibility of degrading oil by stimulating the activity of methanogenic microbial communities, we collected water from the still water and cushion oil fields in Oklahoma. This is a map showing the exact location from, from where we collected these produced waters. And this is the chemical analysis of uh, the collected waters. You can see the, uh, the salt content is high, 116 and 176 grams per, per liter. And that the sulfate content is relatively low, uh, which means that the activity of sulfur reducing bacteria is not that high, and therefore methanogens can can work uh, actively in in this type of in these produced waters. Our experimental procedure consisted of uh, anaerobic batch or bile experiments, where we supplied uh, uh, carbon dioxide in the form of sodium bicarbonate and crude oil to uh, to 100 milliliter milliliters of produced water in an anaerobic chamber. This is to preserve the anaerobic condition of produced water. And we uh, also added hydrochloric acid. This is to regulate the pH around 4.5, which is the optimum pH for the activity of fermentative microbes. And we tested two types of protein-rich matter, is extract and soy protein. This was to test the feasibility of using soy protein as a substitute for yeast extract, which is an expen expensive chemical. Once we prepared the bias, we traced the formation of gas in the he head space, and we analyzed the composition of the remaining oil in the bile after, after some time uh, of incubation at, uh, at 50 Celsius in, this, in the first experiments we, we conducted. So what, what we found is that, uh, in fact, uh, Combined supply of protein-rich matter and carbon dioxide stimulates uh, the activity of methanogenic oil degrading microbial communities. Uh, the biodegradation rate of oil was around 33 milliliters per cubic meter, meter per day, and around 60% of the supplied oil was degraded after 150 50 days. So this is uh, 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 this figure is showing how the concentration of gases changes in the head space. You can see hydrogen is initially formed, uh, uh, most likely from the biodegradation of the supplied uh, protein-rich matter. But uh, you can see that the formed hydrogen is uh, removed in the form of methane gas. And this, this is reflected by an increase in the concentration of methane and the decrease in the concentration of uh, carbon dioxide in the head space. Eventually, hydrogen is produced from the degradation of oil. And at the end, uh, we can see that uh, the high, this is a, this is a chromatograph and showing the uh, composition of oil, of the remaining oil. You can see that the highs of the, of the peaks, they decrease, they decrease compared to the raw crude, crude oil, to the supplied crude oil. And this is an indication of biodegradation. Uh, this, uh, the highs of the peaks are proportional to the concentration of, in this case, alkanes in, in, in oil. Then uh, uh, you might be wondering uh, whether CO2 had actually something to do with the, with the biodegradation of oil. Well, the answer is yes. This is a figure showing how the concentration of gases changes in the headspace without the supply of carbon dioxide. And you can see that hydrogen accumulates and remains practically constant in the headspace of the bio uh, without the supply of carbon dioxide. And methane, is, uh, is, uh, methane formation is practically zero or below detection limits. And uh, we don't see the formation, eventual formation of methane as we did with the supply of carbon dioxide, as we can see here in this representative gas chromatogram of the head, head space. Now, the question we are uh, aiming to answer now is uh, whether we can use this method to remove dissolved oil from, from produced water. And uh, the experimental procedure is the same one we used before, except that in this case, we are not adding oil to the top of the of produced water. So it's same as before, we are extracting uh, uh, dissolved oil using exane, and we are analyzing the extracted oil from produced water using gas chromatography. These are picture, representative pictures of the extracted oil from, from the 
from produced water. And we are also, of course, uh, monitoring the formation of gases in the headspace, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, methane, even hydrogen sulfide or, or oxygen to verify that this is an anaerobic uh, environment. So uh, here are some, uh, here, here is a gas chromatogram of the uh, extracted oil from uh, uh, produced water uh, collected from Robert Treewell. Uh, that was treated with uh, is extract and carbon dioxide. And this is the gas chromatogram of the blank sample. I mean, the same water, but that, it, that wasn't treated with the yeast extract and carbon dioxide. And, and you, can, you can see that the highs of the peaks, they decrease with the treatment of yeast extract and carbon dioxide, which is an indication of, of again, an indication of, of biodegradation. So it happens, it, it appears that uh, the proposed method can be used to remove desorbed oil from produced, from produced water. But uh, the temperature we used was 50 Celsius, which raises the question of whether we can use this method uh, at 25 uh, Celsius or at, or at ambient temperature conditions. So here, are, uh, here is the chromatogram of extracted produced water from um, um, extracted oil from produced water that was treated with the yeast and carbon dioxide after seven days. And this is the blank sample. And the sample that was not treated with anything was that was incubated along with this treated water at 25 Celsius for seven days. And you can see uh, that the highs of the peaks uh, decrease, which means that this uh, stimulation method also works at ambient temperature conditions, although 25 is not the uh, mass uh, or the optimum condition for the activity of uh, fermentative microbes, which degrade oil to, to acid and, and hydrogen. And uh, th that's, that's the reason why the degradation rate is uh, slower than at 50, uh, than at 50 Celsius. So um, at the, the other question we wanted to answer is whether CO2 is also playing a role at a ambient temperature conditions. And here, uh, here are some uh, chromatograms of um, water treated with yeast extract and carbon dioxide and water treated just with yeast as a nutritional source. And uh, you can see that uh, after seven days, the highs of the peaks are smaller with the supply of yeast extract and carbon dioxide, meaning that uh, CO2 does play a role. And after 20 days, the difference, I mean, is, is maintained you can see that the uh, highs of the peaks are still smaller uh, with the treatment of yeast and carbon dioxide than, than with the treatment of just yeast, which uh, verifies that uh, uh, the combined supply of carbon dioxide and protein-rich matter has a synergetic stimulating effect on the activity of uh, all degrading methanogenic my microbial communities. Now, the other question we, we wanted to answer is uh, whether we can use uh, soy protein as substitute for yeast extract. Uh, because uh, as you might be aware, yeast extract is a, is a very well elaborated uh, product that might be difficult, that it might be difficult to, to, to use in practical applications. So uh, we conducted the same experiments, but this time we used soy protein. And these are pictures of the bios of a vial that was treated, vial containing water treated with soy protein and carbon dioxide. And you can tell from the difference in color between the blank sample that was not treated and the one that was treated with soy protein and carbon dioxide that oil was removed from produced water after, in this case, after, after seven days, after one week. And these are the corresponding extracted oil from the, from the uh, treated and untreated produced water. And you can tell from the color that uh, oil has been uh, remove it from, from uh, produced water. It has been converted to, to something else, uh, carbon dioxide to, to, to a great uh, degree. And uh, this is verified by the gas chromatograms again. The highs of the peaks are smaller than in the, in the blank sample. And this is at 50 Celsius. Now at 25 Celsius, as expected, the uh, degree of oil removal is um, uh, lower after the same time, one week, seven days. But still, you can tell from the difference in the color of the of the treated and untreated water samples that uh, degradation has happened, and this is again verified by the difference in the highs of the peaks in both chromatograms. So uh, the reaction is slower, but uh, it's still possible to uh, uh, 
remove oil by the proposed uh, stimulation method using a soy protein, which happens to be the most abundant and, and cheapest uh, source of uh, proteins in the, in the world. So uh, then we wanted to, to quantify exactly what, how much of total oil we were, we were removing from, from produced water by the proposed stimulation method. And to do that, we are using an spectrophotomatic method where we prepare standard solutions of oil in exane, uh, oil that was produced along with the produced water. Right, and uh, we use these standards to measure the absorbency of light to construct this uh, calibration curve. And uh, we use this calibration curve to calculate the concentration of oil in, in a water sample, in treated uh, produced water or untreated produced water. And this is a picture showing the extracted oil that we, uh, that we, of, of which we, met, we measure its, its uh, light absorbency to calculate the uh, uh, concentration of uh, oil in uh, in the in water in the produced water. Now, uh, roughly, we can we can say that uh, uh, eighty percent of oil can be uh, removed from produced water after one week by the uh, proposed stimulation method at twenty five Celsius. These are some some representative uh, uh, figures, bar figures showing the difference in the in the concentration of oil in the blank and treated samples with uh, uh, soy protein and carbon dioxide. Now we are also studying the, uh, uh, the effect of changing, in addition uh, to the pH, the oxidation reduction potential of water. This is important because methanogens are more active around uh, minus uh, 200 milli millivolts of oxidation reduction potential. And sodium sulfide is a common chemical used to in the laboratory to, to to reduce the oxidation reduction potential of water, but this is to uh, mostly to grow microbes rather than to degrade the uh, degrade oil. The object is a little bit different, but we anyway we wanted to test the the, the role of or, or the effect of oxidation uh, reduction potential on the biodegradation of of oil. And uh, these are, are other representative pictures showing that uh, there is a difference in the in the color. I, more, probably this is more convincing than any than worse uh, uh, to to prove that the method works. This is the blank sample and and to treat the water with uh, soy protein and and carbon dioxide. So this is another another uh, uh, proof of of the applicability of this of this method. Now uh, we think that uh, this uh, method can be uh, uh, applied in the field using existing. Uh, Produce water storage tanks like like this one shown here. Produce produce water storage tanks are common to all processing uh, plants. Uh, to produce uh, uh, water storage here eventually are treated with some chemicals before they are injected into depleted oil reservoirs for just for disposal or for enhanced oil recovery. So we think that uh, uh, we can use these tanks as uh, reactors. Where we where we add protein rich matter and carbon dioxide and and uh, and um, uh, modify the pH and oxidation reduction potentials to 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 accelerate the, the degradation of oil in this storage tank within probably one two weeks, which is relatively fast. And the effluent uh, we contain very low, much lower concentrations of of dissolved oil, but it will still contain uh, other contaminants like uh, like uh, heavy metals. Which uh, we think it can be, uh, we think they can be removed by by using uh, dolomite filters. This is another method we are working on. Dolomite filters happen. To, what we found is that uh, they are very effective in removing heavy metals rather than uh, alkaline air metals, and that, and they are very very cheap. So this is another uh, project that we are working on, and uh, the effluent. Uh, will be uh, produce water still with high concentrations of sodium chloride, uh, other hydrocarbon compounds, compounds uh, that can be treated using conventional methods like membrane filtration, activation, carbon filtration, depending on the final use. But uh, this will cost much less because uh, oil plug into poor membrane materials will not be will not be there, or it will be at there will be there at trace concentrations. So this is uh, uh, the new treatment system that we are uh, working on, and this uh, the methanogenic biodegradation of oil hydrocarbons is one of the of the components of, of this system. And 
I want to emphasize that we also do uh, computational uh, work on these uh, treatment methods and disposal of produced water uh, that uh, I would like to introduce uh, some, uh, some other time. Uh, as conclusions, uh, uh, I, we can say that oil hydrocarbons can be uh, removed from produced water by stimulating the activity of indigenous methanogenic microbial communities. The combined supply of protein-rich matter in carbon dioxide has a synergetic stimulating effect on the activity of methanogenic oil degrading microbial communities. Oil by degradation rates by the combined supply of protein rich matter and carbon dioxide is order of magnitude faster than under natural conditions. And the proposed method constitutes an economic alternative uh, uh, to treat produced water for oil hydrocarbons. Uh, finally, I want to acknowledge uh, at the contributions of uh, current and former students uh, colleagues and collaborators, Dr. Jim Parker, Dr. Tao Wu, uh, uh, Mustafa Shahed, and Toby Williams, a former uh, member of the lab and alumni of the School of Geology, who is now a director of operations in Greenberg Company, and uh, the funding from uh, the Office of Vice President uh, of the Vice President for Research and the United States Geological Survey, who, who, who have been uh, funding this uh, research project for the for the last years. Well, with that, uh, uh, I can take some questions if you have, and thank you very much. Very good, Javier. Thank you for the for the presentation. Very interesting work you're doing. Um, do we have any questions? So if not, I've, I've got a question maybe just to get things started and maybe I missed it um, uh, towards the beginning, um, but I guess where in, uh, where would you see this process being uh, utilized? Um, like uh, uh, within storage tanks or storage ponds um, uh, after the water is, is treated, that's where you would, okay, there you are. Yeah, I think, I think they, they have a, uh, they can be implemented in uh, existing facilities like produce water storage storage tanks like this one, mm -hmm. and that uh, which uh, would be relatively uh, inexpensive. I mean, you don't need to add any other equipment. But that's what the what the final goal it is. I mean, to to develop an economic treatment method that doesn't cost much, but at the same time still effective. And I, I see this being implemented in this kind of, of, of facilities. Subsurface is another possibility using carbon dioxide. I mean, uh, supercritical carbon dioxide and coupled with uh, geological carbon storage, but that's difficult to sell to, to oil companies. I mean, this method might be easier to sell to uh, environmental companies or, or, or water treating uh, companies who can, who can use and monitor better what's happening to in, in these tanks. So would they have to add some additional storage? So you would have a seven day um, uh, period for, for the treatment to occur or would that fit within, I guess, normal operating procedures? Yeah, yes, yes, that's, that's, uh, that time will work perfect perfect with uh, with these systems and um, I mean I was working as as a uh, uh, pr production chemicals and drilling fluids engineering before and I was in charge actually of, of produce water uh, for enhanced or recovery so the, the, the time you 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 have produce water story started in tanks is around that uh, that time I mean you store produce water here uh, from separators mm -hmm. and then you treat them with some chemicals before you reject them into into subsurface for enhanced or recovery and seven days is uh, is uh, is at least I mean that's um, the shortest time you will you will have produced water stored in in water in in these tanks before before you you, dis, you dispose them. So uh, yeah, from that experience, I know it, it, it should be it should be suitable. Great. Any other questions or Javier? Any uh, parting thoughts or comments for the group? Well, uh, uh, if if somebody has access to to produce water and I want to test how his or her produced water will behave or will respond to this treatment method, uh, please feel free to contact me. We we would like to try 
with as many as uh, possible produce waters to see it, to see the, uh, the, how, how this treatment method works. Now, what, something I want to highlight is that uh, the method itself, I mean, the, the stimulating effect of protein rich matter is well known. What, what we are found, what we, what we found here is that the combined supply of protein rich matter and carbon dioxide, that's not known. And the feasibility of using soy protein as substitute for yeast extract, which is expensive. I mean, that's, uh, those are the two key points or two important findings of, of this research. I mean, uh, that yeast extract stimulates activity of most microbes is already in, is, is very well known. It's, it should be, of course, reflected by the, a decrease in the, or degradation of oil. What we are showing here is that you can, you can use soy protein, which is cheap, and that if you mix it with carbon dioxide, it's much more effective to, to, remove, to remove oil. So that, that's the... That's the point of this uh, of this uh, uh, of this uh, research of this of this work. Other than that, the, the reactions and everything is very well known. Very good. Well, thanks again, Javier. Great presentation and uh, excellent work. Okay, thank you. Thank you.